In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Be gracious and merciful to me, poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 85. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for wholeness and not for evil. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me. And I will hear you. Lord, you are favorable to your land. You restore the fortunes of Jacob. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. Faithfulness springs up from the ground. And righteousness looks down from the sky. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for wholeness and not for evil. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me. And I will hear you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us.
frailty we have brought upon ourselves, we may be delivered by your bountiful goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Proverbs chapter 8. For wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell in prudence, and I find knowledge in discretion. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and way of evil and perverted speech I hate. I have counsel and sound wisdom. I have insight. I have strength. By me kings reign, and rulers decree what is just. By me princes rule, and nobles all who govern justly. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, even fine gold, and my yield than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness, in the paths of justice granting an inheritance to those who love me, and filling their treasury. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Epistle from Philippians chapter 3. Brothers, join in imitating me, and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many, of whom I have often told you, and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body, by the power that enables him to even subject all things to himself. This is for Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle Jesus in his talk. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully. And you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled. They left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe
through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is caused by the Holy Spirit, written by the Apostle Paul, our epistle reading, Dear Brothers and Sisters in Christ Jesus. What do you want to be when you grow up? How many times did people ask you that as you're growing up? Maybe if you're still a child, how many times have people asked you that here in the last few weeks? What are you going to be when you grow up? My wife still asks me that question, I think. <laughs> and um, a special notice to anyone else that wants to donate toilet paper to the parsonage yard. You don't have to unroll it. We'll take it still together. Got a half a roll still together. Appreciate it. Um, thanks for your donations. What do you want to be when you grow up? Maybe uh, you want to be what your dad was when, or is. Uh, maybe even a pastor as the church is in great need of young men to aspire to the office. The word needs preached and sinners need forgiven, especially in our country. Maybe you want to pursue the military as our nation recognizes and remembers our veterans and are grateful for their sacrifices. What do you want to be when you grow up? Last few weeks I watched documentaries on Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone who didn't have great fathers and so they cut out pictures of big strong men and put it on their bedroom walls. They worked out every day to try and be like these men. They grew to be great movie stars, right? All of us recognize those names. What do you want to be when you grow up? Paul in the beginning of our epistle, says, be like me, not me, Paul. He says, imitate him. That is, be a Christian man. Now, Paul was likely uh, a meager, a humble man. He wasn't some big, strong, 300-pound bodybuilder. Paul was one who was beaten Paul actually, as he writes this letter and he tells you to imitate him, be like him, he's actually in prison on his way to Rome to testify before Caesar. So Paul saying, be like me, <laughs> is saying that from prison. Why would anyone want to be like prisoner Paul? The word sumametes really means Join me, y'all. Be like me, y'all. Imitate me. It's really where we get that word. You can even hear it, mimetes. Imitate me. And so that we're clear, yes, parents, I'm telling your kids to be like prisoner Paul. But I'm not saying be a criminal. In fact, Paul didn't do anything wrong or break any crimes for being in prison. He simply preached the gospel. He simply preached that Christ is the Savior for Jews and Gentiles. And just like Jesus, Jews had Paul arrested and sent him to the Romans, and he was on his way in prison to Caesar. Not much freedom of speech in Paul's day. So we don't want our kids to break the law to be like prisoner Paul. We want them to be steadfast Christians who hold to Christ alone. In fact, it's this chapter in Philippians 3 where Paul says famously that it's not about him. Don't imitate Paul because of Paul's greatness. Imitate Paul because Paul trusted in Christ alone. <laughs> Paul goes through a long list of all his accomplishments. I mean, this is St. Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. Half the books in the New Testament are written by Paul. 
And yet, Paul says famously, right before our text, list all of my accomplishments, and all of it is dung. Worthless when it comes to salvation. Because it's only in Christ alone that we are saved. We are saved because of 100% of the work of Jesus Christ and 0% of the work of any of us. And yet Paul says, imitate me, not because he's chief of sinners, but because he depends on Christ for everything. He even says, you know... I would rather be in heaven. I would rather be already dead and in glory, but God still has me here. So I will serve others. Imitate Paul in relying and trusting in Jesus Christ and his righteousness. That is the cross of Jesus. The cross of Jesus is where he gave his life so that you, sinner, would be forgiven, so that all of your life of dung would be covered with the righteousness, the wisdom that we heard in Proverbs of Jesus. Jesus, who's, out, who's so wise he can outflank the Pharisees as they try and trap him in his words, making him sound like he's against Caesar, and then he comes with one of the most brilliant things ever uttered, give to Caesar what is Caesar and to God's what is God's, clarifying the vocation for every human being that's ever lived, that we are citizens of this world and we have duties within our government and we do thank those who have fought in our nation, our veterans, but we are also citizens of heaven, as Paul says, with an eternal inheritance that Jesus won on the cross and gives freely to you through holy baptism and holy communion. I was watching a, a video uh, that kind of was differentiating Lutherans and other Protestants. <clears throat> and, and the Protestants kind of wonder, why, why you Lutherans take Jesus so seriously about communion? Why do we have all this formal liturgy? And the Lutherans, we say, you know, if we are saved by the blood of Christ in Christ alone, then perhaps God didn't leave it up to chance whether we would receive that blood. But Jesus, in his command in the New Testament, assures us we have the blood that he gives to take away our sins. Imitate Paul in receiving the saving blood of Christ in the Holy Communion. <clears throat> now there's us, there's Christians who are to imitate Paul, and then there's others who imitate the world or they imitate unbelievers. And Paul calls them, catch this, it's kind of interesting, he calls them, be careful not to follow after the enemies of the cross of Christ. So you're either faithful, trusting Christians in what Jesus won for you on the cross, or you are enemies of that cross. The world is the way it is because the world is enemies of the cross. When we pull out our hair and when we have anxious nights worrying about our country and the state of the world today, wars around the world, it is because the world is enemies of the church of God, of the cross of Christ. The world has a long history, that is, we people <laughs> have a long history of opposing God, whether it was from the outstart in the garden of telling God, he can't tell me what to eat or what tree to eat from. Or in the commandments, when we just push aside, honor your father and your mother, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not covet. 
Earlier, it's very interesting, in Philippians 3, the same chapter we're reading from, Paul talks about the enemies of the cross mutilating the flesh. I don't know what it was like in Paul's day, but sadly today, legally, children's flesh is mutilated trying to impersonate another sex that's not their own. Maybe it's happening rarely, and maybe you don't know anyone who faces these challenges, but it is going on, cutting off body parts and calling it good. My, is this world confused. Oswald Hoffman, Lutheran Hour speaker, years ago said in World War II, as many were trapped in concentration camps, they underwent what was called barbed wire syndrome. Being caged in like an animal can kind of drive you crazy. This was a mental sickness where people who were hemmed in and boxed in and kind of treated like animals began to believe it. Sadly, people were out of their mind being caged in in concentration camps, getting into fights, spilling their food, pent up, anxious, crazy. They didn't look as human as they actually were. A barbed wire syndrome. Paul is writing in prison. But Paul is not undergoing this mental sickness at all. Because he has Christ. He has the freedom that Jesus has won so that no matter what his government imprisons him for, he has the freedom of eternal life, not, not the way of the world. His government, within probably the next two years after writing this letter, will chop off his head. Paul knew his citizenship was in heaven. Imitate him. But the world is the one who's experienced a barbed wire syndrome. Whether they actually are caged in like in World War II, or they have nice fancy houses in the gift of freedom that soldiers have won for them in a cul-de-sac or in a suburb or out here in the country in rural Illinois. The world is ha has a barbed-wired syndrome, knowing that their time is coming to a close. They know the wages of sin is death. Humans are the only living creature that knows it's going to die. Paul says, their God is their belly. They glory in their shame. The enemies of the cross of Christ oppose God where everything seems to be backwards. Up is down. Wicked is good. Boy can be girl. Adultery is cool. Elsewhere, Paul says, and such were some of you. Do not be deceived. The sexually immoral, the adulterous, the covetous cannot receive eternal life. And then Paul says, but you were washed, you were justified sanctified in the blood of Jesus Christ. You Christians don't have barbed wire syndrome. You don't need to be crazy. You don't have to stay up with sleepless nights wondering about the world that your grandchildren will grow up into because you know Christ so that you can die and yet you live. It is good that you see the world is ludicrous. It is good that you can tell that they are out of their minds like a dog on a leash. I was talking with a member this week who has a friend, a younger man who's atheist, and this is her, her friend's nephew. 
And she gets along really well with her friend and her nephew, a nice upstanding young man, except for he doesn't believe in Christ. And this member is not afraid to say something about it, even witness to this man who she wants to take care of. So she says to him, don't you want to know what happens to you when you die? And he says, yes, and then walked away. Even the atheists want what you have. The wisdom of the cross of Christ to know that you have eternal life. Ecclesiastes 3 says, God has put eternity into the hearts of man. There is something hot-wired in every human being that wants to live forever. They are craving Jesus, they just don't know it. And it is the duty of every Christian to be able to confess Jesus in critical moments and conversations with the atheist, abortionist, evolutionist, pluralist, whatever. They need Christ. And if you don't speak his name, they might not hear it. If you don't invite them to church, maybe no one ever will. So imitate Paul, even if it means you might lose that friendship because they might not talk to you. Imitate Paul with the bravery of speaking the name of Jesus even in our country where it seems like we are losing the freedom of speech to do so. Don't let our soldiers in the past have fought for nothing. They fought for the freedom of religion. They fought for the freedom of speech. And Christians are the ones who know best what to say to confess the God of heaven and earth and the saving grace of the cross of Christ. The enemies of the cross, you know what they need the most is the cross because it's the only thing that saves us. <laughs> In fact, when you get into a conversation in Effingham County where almost everyone, 99%, can recognize that transgenderism is wrong, mutilating children's flesh is wrong, when you get in those conversations, then you can say, you know what? But Jesus, he gave his life for them too. The cross of Christ is for everyone. Jesus died for you and the atheist and for all. Imitate Paul in confessing the Lord of heaven and earth. For God has made you allies of the cross. The cross lifted high on our steeple that we care enough to pay exorbitant amount of money to repair and to stand tall, because that is the center of our faith. The cross where Jesus gave his life for you so that you would have citizenship in heaven and where your body would be transformed, it says, by the power of Jesus. The power of Jesus will transform your lowly body that you know is getting weaker and older and slower. Human beings know they're going to die. But Christians know we're going to live. And our bodies will be transformed with a strength that is only in Christ alone. And that glorious day is coming as we await our Savior Jesus who will subject everything to his power. And by faith you will receive this eternal resurrected body on the last day. 
So when we wonder, why would anyone ever want to be like prison Paul? It's because he's in heaven. And he is going to be risen on the last day. And I hope to grow up to be like him. And so do you. And God willing, so will your children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. and all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, you know the plans you have for us, even when we do not. Teach us to trust your promises, leaving our future to your care, with wisdom in your heavenly way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, you call pastors to steadfast and holy lives as examples to your people. Edify them in their vocation. Bless seminarian Beery and his family and all who receive instruction in the office of the ministry. Inspire us to follow after St. Paul in the way of our Savior. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Solomon taught his sons a wisdom that turns from the proud and hates evil. Build our homes upon this holy foundation with love and forgiveness in our marriages. Bless our children with fruitful, godly lives of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mighty God, our rock of refuge, you've called many to our nation's military. John the Baptist blessed those of the armed forces, and your son ministered to them and their families. Uphold the office of the United States Armed Forces and all of the veterans here at Bethlehem. Call us to honor our veterans who put their country and our freedom before themselves. May their service inspire us as Christians to be living sacrifices, taking up our table of duties to one another. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you made us in your image. Whatever we have belongs to you. Let us treasure your word above our money, rendering our taxes and tithes with thanksgiving as citizens of earth and of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, grant protection to the workers of Inspired Heights as they continue to repair our steeple. Grant healing and protection to those in need. We pray for Heather Davis, Bernice Grommans, Arlen Grobengeiser, Mary Beth Potts, Marion Schmidt, Tim Stone, Steve Velker, for Jean Warden, who is hospitalized with pneumonia, Mildred Wolf, who broke her hip and had successful hip surgery yesterday, for Kathy Grobengeiser, who recovers from surgery, and all who are in your almighty hands. Grant them whatever you will for body and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, you hold out us the lives of St. Paul as saints and icons of your gift of life and faith. Convince us of our communion with them as citizens in heaven, as we join in praise of Christ alone, whose blood is given to us on this very altar to forgive our sins unto eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we care, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is truly meet, right, and salutary. We, at all times and places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who out of his love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels, archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we pray and sing the conclusion. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Thank you.